Hello students, welcome once again to the Gillespie's online classroom right here on YouTube. My name is Derek Gillespie and for those who may just be joining the, the channel or may just be for the first time seeing a video from the channel, you're invited to Simply click the subscription uh, bell to be notified. First of all, click subscribe so that you become a member of the channel and then click the subscription bell, notification bell rather, so that you can be alerted when new lessons, new materials, new uploads are done and are made. You'll be alerted right away. Just a reminder as to what the interface of the channel looks like. Feel free to scroll through the various videos to see what interests you or why, what might be relevant to the syllabus that you are studying at this time. Now, this particular lesson video was created specifically for students of fourth form. So fourth form geography students, and this particular lesson will look at the rock cycle and the types of rocks. Now, as you can see displayed to the left of the screen, at the end of this lesson, we're hoping that CXC students in fourth form will understand the rock cycle and the formation of igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks. Of course, we will also be looking at the nature of these rocks and looking at examples of how these particular rocks are formed and examples that are out there in real life. Now, to begin this lesson, let me share with you a short video clip. Rocks are everywhere. They are large and small, heavy or light, porous or dense. But rocks, in some shape or form, can be found all over the planet. Different types of rocks are formed in different ways. There are three main types of rock. Igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Igneous is a word that means fiery. Igneous rock is formed when magma or lava cools. Sometimes magma cools slowly underneath the Earth's surface. This forms intrusive igneous rock, like granite. Other times, lava cools when it comes to the surface in a volcanic eruption. This forms extrusive igneous rock. Some examples of extrusive igneous rock are tuff, obsidian, and pumice. Igneous rocks make up about 95% of the Earth's crust. The next type of rock is sedimentary rock. Sediment is small particles of sand, mud, and organic material that settle to the bottom of water or land areas, often lakes or oceans. Sedimentary rocks are formed when sediment accumulates over time in deposits that form layers. These layers become squeezed and compressed over time until they consolidate into a rock. Sedimentary rocks are the types of rocks in which fossils may be found, since the process of forming sedimentary rocks can preserve plant and animal remains that are deposited into the sediment layers. Some examples of sedimentary rock 
are limestone, shale, and sandstone. The third type of rock is metamorphic rock. The word metamorph means to change form, and metamorphic rock is rock that has been changed by extreme heat and pressure. Sedimentary rock, igneous rock, or even other metamorphic rocks can be changed by heat and pressure into new kinds of rock. Metamorphic rocks can be formed by being deep under the earth where pressure and temperatures are high, or when rock near the surface is heated up by the movement of tectonic plates or magma. Different types of rocks become different types of metamorphic rock when exposed to heat and pressure. For example, shale becomes slate, sandstone becomes quartzite, and limestone becomes marble. Rocks are slowly but constantly changing in something known as the rock cycle. The rock cycle begins with magma, or hot melted rock, deep beneath the Earth's surface. This magma becomes crystallized, becoming igneous rock. These rocks begin to erode, or break down into small pieces because of wind, water, or other forces. The small fragments of rock are carried away as sediment when water passes over them, and are deposited in layers, which eventually become sedimentary rocks. Then, some sedimentary rocks are pushed below the surface due to tectonic activity, where they are exposed to heat and pressure, transforming them into metamorphic rocks. If the rocks are buried even deeper, then they melt and form magma, starting the cycle all over again. Of course, sedimentary and metamorphic rocks can be eroded into sediment, and igneous rock can become metamorphic rock or lava. But one way or another, rocks all over the world keep changing from one form to the next. Okay, fourth form students. So there you have a sort of introduction to the idea of what rocks are and the various types and categories of rocks and how they change from one form to another because of the natural processes that are at play in the natural environment. Now, for the next minute or so, I will simply be sharing with you a quick summary on screen in note form of the main ideas of this lesson. Feel free to pause the screen, take screenshots of the notes, or to make summary notes in your own words. Here we go. Please make note of important vocabulary such as weathering, erosion, transportation, and deposition. And do a check for the meanings of these words. Very important words. Then we move to uh, an illustrative diagram which brings together the main ideas that were introduced in the introductory video clip looking at the change of the various categories or groups of rock or rocks from one type to another. Pause the screen and analyze carefully this diagram. In fact, I would advise that you practice to draw this diagram because you will never know. It will become helpful in the CXE exam or you might be asked specifically to draw an illustrative diagram of the rock cycle. So pause the screen, take a screenshot and then thereafter practice drawing this diagram. We then move to the summary of the three categories of rocks, igneous, sedimentary, and the metamorphic group of rocks. As you can see, 
summary of the main points on screen. Feel free to pause the screen, take a screenshot, or make a summary of the main points in your own words. While you're doing, doing so, be reminded that rocks basically are substances which are made up of minerals. The basic components of rocks are called minerals. And rocks generally are hard substances which together they comprise the outer shell of the Earth's um, make up what we call the crust or the lithosphere. And this outer shell of minerals which combine together to form rocks, some harder than some, all these combination of minerals forming rocks together create what is called a lithosphere. Lithos meaning rocks and sphere meaning covering all around. So here we have the three categories of rocks into which all rocks are grouped. Now here on screen, we see another simplified version of the rock cycle as the various types of rocks change from one form to another by the natural processes in the environment. Feel free to pause, take a screenshot, analyze this diagram, and also practice to draw it for your own purposes as you prepare for the CSEC or CXC exams. Now, here is a very quick and interesting piece of information. Limestone, which is very, very common in parts of the Caribbean and in Jamaica, especially where I live, over 70% of Jamaica is consisting of limestone rock. Here we have a very important piece of information that limestone is a very useful rock. It is used to manufacture cement, to spread on fields, in other words, the farms, to make soils less acidic and therefore make them more suitable for growing crops. Crushed limestone can act as a filter in power stations to remove harmful gases. And of course, many people don't know that limestone is found even in toothpaste. The next time you brush your teeth, be aware that the toothpaste you're using may well contain some limestone as it acts as an abrasive. In other words, it's the substance which will help the toothbrush to scrub your teeth, surface of your teeth, and make them clean. On screen, additional information and even a summary question which can be used to guide your study and which you can use as practice to prepare for your CXC exam. Feel free to pause the screen, to take a screenshot, or to make short notes on the topic. Now, in this final part of this lesson on rocks and the rock cycle, I will be sharing another video clip, this time a little longer than the introductory one, which will go into greater detail about rocks for suitable for high school students in upper school, fourth and fifth form. And so I will allow that video to get into the details, ensure students that you pause the video where necessary, make note of key vocabulary, take screenshots, make summary notes, and in fact, re-watch this entire video, this teaching video from my YouTube channel, which includes these two video clips to help you better prepare on the subject of, subject of rocks and the rock cycle. So here we go. Now, if you become a geographer, you'll need a basic understanding of rocks because that's how you'll get to know the landform and probably the earth's surface. So rocks are categorized under three families on the basis of the mode of formation. They are igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, and metamorphic rocks. 
let's understand each one of them. So the first one is igneous rock. Now igneous rocks are formed out of magma and lava from the interior of the earth. So magma is also called molten rock and it is found in the mantle of the earth. If you remember this pic showing the different layers of earth, mantle is filled with magma and when magma comes out of the surface, it cools down and becomes solid. That's how the igneous rocks are born. Now igneous rock is also known as primary rock because it is formed from magma. So anything that is formed right from the core ingredient of the earth has to be called as primary rock. The word igneous is derived from a Latin word called ignis, which means fire. Now mantle is filled with magma and when magma comes out of the surface, it cools down and becomes solid. That's how igneous rocks are formed. So mantle is in a way a fire. The process of cooling and solidification can happen both in the earth's crust as well as on the surface of the earth. We now know that igneous rock is formed from cooling down of magma. But you need to understand this. When magma comes out of the mantle, it can sometimes just stay under the crust. It need not get out on the surface. Sometimes magma just cools down under the crust itself. That's why during open cast mining, large chunks of igneous rocks are found. Igneous rocks are classified based on texture. When we say texture, we mean something like this. Look at the color as well as design pattern. And this texture depends upon size and arrangement of grains or other physical conditions of the materials. So if you remember while reading about physical properties of minerals, there we read that the external shape depends upon the molecular arrangement of crystals within. So rocks are these tiny soil debris packed together. And depending upon these debris, the color of the grains, overall external look will be dependent on it. If molten material is cooled slowly at greater depths, mineral grains may be very large. Sudden cooling at the surface results in small and smooth grains. Remember the third point where I said sometimes the magma cools down under the crust itself and does not really comes out on the surface. So when magma cools under the crust, it does become solid, but it does not get exposed to the external weathering agents like wind, river and ice. Because of that, the mineral grains do not break, they are intact. And as it is, there is a huge amount of pressure under the crust and plus temperature is not normal too. So in this situation, those igneous rocks that are formed under the crust or in deep depth of the earth, they tend to be very large in size. It's like as long as the rock is under the earth's surface, the pressure and temperature doesn't let the mineral debris to split apart. It keeps them intact. The intermediate conditions of cooling would result in intermediate sizes of grains making up igneous rocks. When you look at the rocks that comes under igneous rock, I'm talking about granite, gabbro, pegmatite, basalt, volcanic breccia. All these looks different in terms of texture and composition. And it is because of the fact that all these rocks have evolved with different conditions. I mean, some cooled early, some late, some faced more pressure, some faced less, conditions like that. After all, two products will look different only if there is a change in their process of formation. How else can they be different then? So this was about the igneous rocks. Now we move on to the second type, sedimentary rocks. The word sedimentary is derived from the Latin word sedimentum, which means settling. First of all, sedimentary rocks can be easily broken down into tiny sediments of mud and soil debris. They also have the tendency to settle down in the earth's surface easily. Rocks of the earth's surface are exposed to denudational agents and are broken up into various sizes of fragments. These denudational agents are also referred to as exogenous forces like wind, water, ice, etc. These forces over the time erodes the rock and breaks it down into small soil debris. It happens to all types of rocks that is igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic. Such fragments are transported by different exogenous agencies and deposited. These deposits through compaction turn into rocks. This process is called lithification. Now this process is also known as the rock cycle. I made a video on it, do check it out. Nature has such nice way of performing this rock cycle. Rocks are eroded with the help of exogenous forces like wind, air, ice into tiny little soil debris. These debris, they move from one place to another again with the help of the same exogenous forces. Now these small fragments gets deposited in the form of layers and layers one after another. This process creates pressure that is called compaction and as it is there is good amount of heat under the crust so it becomes all the more easier for these debris to develop into a full-fledged rock. This process is called lithification. 
In many sedimentary rocks, the layer of deposits retain their characteristics even after lithification. Hence, we see a number of layers of varying thickness in sedimentary rocks like sandstone, shale, etc. So if you look at shale and sandstone, here it is, notice there are line patterns depicting layers. So these are the layers of deposits. They are very much visible. It is not visible in every sedimentary rock. Now, depending upon the mode of formation, sedimentary rocks are classified into three major groups. The first one is mechanically formed. When we say mechanical, that means it follows a natural pattern. How rocks weather down, then becomes tiny soil debris, which later on with accumulation and compaction becomes a rock again. So this is a natural cycle, also known as mechanical cycle. Now, when we say organically formed, we mean rocks formed from organic debris such as leaves, roots and other plant or animal material. You see limestone and coal contains fossils and that's why they are organically formed. And when we say chemically formed, we mean rocks formed due to precipitation of minerals from water. Precipitation is the creation of a solid from a solution. If you see, how is halite, potash and limestone formed? Millions of years ago, evaporation of seawater led to the formation of these minerals. So this was all about the sedimentary rocks. Now we go to the last division of rock called metamorphic rock. The word metamorphic means change of form. Just like metamorphosis, where the caterpillar transforms into butterfly, so the word meta means change in other form. Now these rocks from under the action of pressure, volume and temperature changes. Rocks are as it is so hard and to change their form, just imagine how much of pressure and temperature is required. So it needs incredible amount of pressure and temperature. So in the previous point, I said metamorphic rocks require great amount of pressure and temperature. The question is where and how will the rocks get the pressure and temperature? So you see the tectonic movement is referred to as the movement of plates on which oceans and continents reside. When two plates come closer, we call it as convergent boundary. In convergent mechanism, a smaller plate subducts under a larger plate. With this, all the rocks that is sedimentary and igneous moves towards the mantle that is under the crust. That's how pressure and heat influences the rocks to become metamorphic. Metamorphism is a process by which already consolidated rocks undergo recrystallization and reorganization of materials within original rocks. So this recrystallization and reorganization of a rock happens due to extreme heat and pressure. When the rocks make their way inside the mantle during subduction, heat and pressure acts on them and transform them into metamorphic rocks. Now the transformation of metamorphic rocks happen in two ways. One is through dynamic metamorphism and the other is through thermal metamorphism. Let me cover these two points together. Now rocks undergo dynamic as well as thermal change. So one is due to pressure of the massive weight of the landform and the other is due to heat from the interior of the earth. It is very easy to remember this. In chemistry, if you want to separate the elements from a mineral, you basically heat it to a point that it melts. So thermal metamorphism does chemical alteration to the rocks. Now, under thermal metamorphism, they are of two types. One is contact metamorphism and the other is regional metamorphism. To understand this, I'll do an illustration. So far, we know that rocks make it to the interior of the earth due to tectonic activities, right? Now, when the rocks are under the crust, the contact metamorphism refers to the point where these rocks come in direct contact with hot magma and lava. So this is going to melt the rocks and recrystallize them in different form. So this is contact metamorphism. Now in regional metamorphism, the rocks do not become molten rocks in order to change their shape. They just need the incredible pressure of the landform above and high temperature as well, but do not mistake it with molten form. It need not melt the rock. That's why contact means in touch with magma and regional means around the magma so that heat of the magma does the trick. In the process of metamorphism in some rocks, grains or minerals get arranged in layers or lines. Such an arrangement of minerals or grains in metamorphic rocks is called foliation or lineation. Now have a look at this picture. You see this horizontal line, nice clear pattern sort of a thing. This is called foliation or lineation. Imagine how much of pressure this rock must have gone through so that layers are visible. Now in the similar manner, we have banding, where layers appear in light and dark shades. They will not have a clear pattern, but still you will see different layers of shades. That's why this is also called as foliation. Now types of metamorphic rocks depend upon 
original rocks that were subjected to metamorphism. Metamorphic rocks are classified into two groups, foliated rocks and non-foliated rocks. We have read about what are foliated rocks. So under foliated rocks, you will see a nice clear pattern sort of a thing. And then you have a banded rock. But the non-foliated rocks looks like this. You will see random patches of shades. Basically, it looks like an ugly rough rock. But you will not at all find any layer. That's how you can recognize foliated and non-foliated metamorphic rock. If you want to see more of such educational content. Okay, students. So that brings to a close the more detailed video clip which gives more details on the subject for those who want to delve a little further. As I close this lesson, let me recommend to you the text Geography for CSEC, the second edition. You may have the printed copy or you may have the digital copy. Um, chapter one, towards the end of the chapter, you'll find a section dealing with rocks and the rock cycle. Let me share that with you now. So here on page 26 of the digital version of the book Geography for CSEC by Nelson Thorns, um, you have a nice summary as well on the topic, the rock cycle and the various types of rocks. Remember, it's the second edition of the book Geography for CSEC. Feel free to pause the screen and to take screenshots. As I scroll slowly through the pages related to this topic in the textbook recommended. So there you have it for form students and fifth form students and even for third form students who might have started this topic early but remember geography for csec is a three-year course starts in third form and continues through to fifth form success to you as you study the rocks of the earth and the rock cycle